I'm here with Philip on the Siemens booth at PowerGen Europe. Philip, hydrogen's been around for many years in the energy industry. It's suddenly taken on a whole new aspect in terms of the energy transition. What's changed? So the main thing which is changing is the increasing share of renewable energies in the grid. So it's rising drastically, so you have to integrate that in an existing infrastructure. And hydrogen could be one key component, or let's say electrolysis in specific, could be one key component. More and more in integrating these renewable energies into the um, existing grid, but also yeah, kind of storage, decoupling electricity production and the users at the end of the chain. Okay. And the other thing that folks that wouldn't be familiar with the industry, so they hear about hydrogen, they hear about green hydrogen. How, how, do, you, how do you distinguish that to folks that don't know? So actually the hydrogen now gets more and more colors. The green hydrogen is it's true. The hydrogen produced by renewable energies. Yep. There's pink hydrogen, I guess, by nuclear power. Oh, I hadn't heard um, of that one. Blue hydrogen. I heard of that. Uh, if you to conventional hydrogen production and the CO2 you just capture and store. Right? Now, when we were chatting earlier this morning as well, you had a great comment around, okay, so I will invest in, let's say, the latest and greatest technology. So I have my electrolyzer. I'm getting renewable energy. But in order for the, let's say, the, the economic models to work, you were saying that, well, this thing has to run for X thousand hours a year as opposed to, it's not just turning on once every week for an hour. What's so that? In, in fact, you have two main components which are, yeah, let's say, mainly impacting the hydrogen generation costs. It's the car picture and it's yep. the electricity costs. Okay. Roughly, if you go above 4,000 operation hours, the car picture does not that much move anymore in, in, in terms of reduction. So if you have the hydrogen production less than 4,000 hours, the car picture is just drastically increasing. So the cost is... Yeah. Okay. The, the electricity costs, they keep constant. But of course, they are dominating that if you run above 4,000 hours, the hydrogen generation costs. So we are typically mainly depending on the electricity costs in terms of cheap hydrogen production. Okay. And now with all of the, the advancements and at Siemens you guys have some new technologies around the, the electrolyzer and 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 where do you see the first, let's say, use cases? We, we've heard of um, hydrogen cars, hydrogen for transport. We hear of it being used in the fertilizer industry, chemical industry, yeah. shipping, yeah. even planes. Yeah. Where, where do you see it gaining traction faster today? So the big three use cases is the energy sector yeah. and the mo mobility. Okay. which is in my view the future growing market. The already today's existing market is the industry sector with the main user of hydrogen as uh, ammonia production. Okay. Uh, roughly 50% of the whole hydrogen, global hydrogen demand is going into ammonia production as a precursor for fertilizer. Yeah. Um, so this is existing hydrogen production technology which could be potentially replaced by green hydrogen production, in fact, electrolysis. Right? Okay. Might not be necessarily uh, let's say this sweet spot, the first sweet spot we have to find to bring that in the market to, to produce the first use cases, the, the, the prototypes, the, uh, let's say, the, the show types. No, how's it called? Uh, well, yeah, kind of the proof of concept. Yeah. But, and I suppose it, it's also dependent on if I'm in the, the Ruhr Valley or I'm in an industrial zone where there's chemical plants, then it makes sense to, to convert it uh, create hydrogen there as opposed to somewhere else in the world and ship it all the way across the globe. So you're absolutely right, you have to find the sweet spots to get the hydrogen generation cost down. This is of course a spot where you have access to cheap electricity, yep. long operation hours of course. Uh, in the best case you produce big scale facilities because the capex is decreasing as bigger the, uh, the, the facility gets. 
and in the best case, you get some second income streams, selling the oxygen, providing grid service, selling the heat, which uh, you have, of course, because you have efficiency loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everything combined could be then this sweet spot. You have to go, you find a positive business case nowadays. Now, we could be talking for the next couple of hours around hydrogen, but last question. Storing hydrogen. Yeah. Today you can store a certain amount. I hear people talking about putting it down salt mines so you have enough energy for Berlin for the winter. Yeah. Where, where are we with, with storing hydrogen today? So the existing technology is of course pressurized hydrogen. There is something called like uh, LOHC. Okay. Liquid organic hydrogen carrier, which is kind of an oil uh, organic carrier for the hydrogen itself. Okay. Um, ammonia, it's more and more coming up because yeah, it's I, I, carbon free. Uh, you just need nitrogen and you have a lot in the air of that nitrogen. The, the hydrogen you get from the sea, so it's. There are many, many opportunities to store hydrogen, but of course, storing hydrogen might be not that cheap. And ha it's still a challenge to do that in a big scale. But I, I, you know, I personally think we're just at the cusp of this whole making hydrogen a reality because there's a lot of moving pieces, but there's a lot of pieces falling in. So it's going to be fascinating to watch for the next couple of years. Right? It's all part of the uh, making energy greener story. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you.